Why wait up to seven years after planting a fruit tree to find out you got it wrong? Everything falls into place if you get this one thing right. But you only have one tree or a small orchard. Then it relates even more to you. 30 years ago, we began by purchasing a 4,000 tree apple orchard that we transitioned to organic and ultimately tore out to replace with a mixed fruit planting inspired by permaculture. These are the keys that would have saved me tens of thousands of dollars and a huge amount of time. Full sun, please. Fruit trees need full sun. If you don't get good grass growth, you can't expect your trees to do well. If you have afternoon sun, that's better than early morning sun because you want your fruit trees to dry up quickly in the morning after a rain or a dew. It's better for disease protection. Good drainage is crucial. Fruit trees don't grow along ponds or bogs. They need good drainage. If they're growing where their feet are in the water, you're gonna have problems for the life of that tree if it doesn't die in a few years. Your shovel should be your friend. Dig down, dig to four feet. If you find you don't have water in your hole four feet down, you got a thumbs up property site. That's the one to choose. If there's water in it, then you'll probably have to mound up, go higher to get four feet. If you wanna learn more about it, check out our course, Selecting Your Site and Designing Your Planting. Start for free at permaculture.study. Protection against deer. If you're in an area with a lot of deer pressure, your new fruit trees can be eaten in one night. And if they're really hungry, in one day. So if you're in an area of high deer pressure, put in a fence before you plant your fruit trees. Maybe you're in an area with a lot of rabbits or voles. Then get a quarter inch galvanized mesh 18 to 24 inches high, and your tree will be protected for life. When you plant your tree is really important. A fall planted tree at leaf fall ideally is absolutely the best. It allows the tree to grow roots when there's no leaves on it, get established so that then when spring comes, it's able to fully put out leaves. Spring is second best. Summer is the worst time to plant a tree. Think stress. Fall is chill. Spring is a little bit worse. And summer is very stressful. What rootstock was used? Nowadays, the majority of fruit trees are grafted onto a rootstock that determines the size of the tree and the type of soil it could grow best in. Dwarfing rootstock will give a smaller dwarf sized tree, could be six feet, while a standard rootstock can produce a 30 foot tree. So which one you use is important. If you have a small yard, small space, stay with a small rootstock. But if you have some room, maybe you want to go with a semi dwarf or a standard rootstock, which will give you a big tree. Remember just that if you need a hardier tree, then the larger rootstock standard will give you generally a hardier tree. For extreme conditions, don't be too impressed by the size of the tree. A big tree often has a lot of roots cut to fit into the pot. Or if it was bare root, the same. Some roots could be cut just to make it easier to ship. A smaller tree often has little or a lot less root pruning done to fit into the pot. So don't be impressed by the size. A smaller tree will often surpass a bigger tree in two to five years. The single most important reason why you're probably growing your fruit tree wrong is the choice of variety or cultivar as it's correctly called. People tend to grow what they know. And that's what the garden centers and nurseries sell because that's what people ask for. Look, if you recognize the name, it's probably a commercial variety and that probably means it needs more sprays, more fertilizer, more pruning, it needs more coddling. Don't blame the garden center or nursery. They are doing 
what they should be doing, which is selling you something you want and then selling you all that you will need afterwards. Isn't that just good business? If you buy from a place that just sells trees, that's less likely to occur. They'll probably sell you one. You go, ah, I've never heard of that. That may be just what you need because it's a tree that requires less. It's easier. Let me give you an example. You've probably heard of Macintosh. In our region, it's the most grown apple, but it's also the one that requires the most spray. If you buy it, you will have to spray it because otherwise you won't get something that really resembles an apple. That's how disease susceptible it is. Did you know that there's dozens, even hundreds of scab and other disease resistant varieties or cultivars to choose from? In apples, for example, if the tag variety says it's PRI to start with or Nova, then it comes from a breeding program to develop scab resistant apples. Hey, if it's not of those, it might be an heirloom. Often heirloom trees are not 100% resistant, but not susceptible to scab. That means that in a year of abundant rain, your tree may have a few spots, but it'll be fine without any sprays needed. These are trees that were easy and still are easy to grow. Nothing beats easy. I say you want to grow an orchard or grow a few fruit trees that grow like weeds. What do you do to grow the weeds? Nothing. And the same can apply to certain fruit trees. If you like this one and want to learn more, check out this video.